Hello everyone, welcome back to Jus de Rose. Today's video is about the top 10 most complimented perfumes rated by Instagram. So I asked my audience on Instagram what is their most complimented perfume and compiled the most popular answers in today's video. I think it's important to have different opinions when it comes to fragrances and you will see that there is one perfume in this list that is ranking super high in terms of the most votes that actually ended up being part of the most hated fragrances videos. So there you go, fragrance is super subjective and I really enjoy knowing different opinions when it comes to specific scents. So without further ado, let's get straight into this list. Coming in at number 10, we have Light Blue by Dolce & Gabbana. Now this fragrance is pretty much the definition of clean girl vibes, but like the original clean girl vibe perfume, if you will. Iconic fragrance, fresh, musky, has a bit of that like marine saltiness to it. There's also some apple. So yeah, overall, this is a very likable scent. Super easy to wear, very good to apply if you're going to the gym and you want to smell good, clean and refreshed. This is the kind of scent that I would always recommend. Or if it's like really hot in the summer and you want to feel very refreshed, again, this is another one that is great to reach out for. And it has a really beautiful sillage, so I can understand why people would compliment on this fragrance. It's very likable, easygoing, Type of perfume number 10 light blue by Dolce & Gabbana number nine we have my beloved Lune Féline by Atelier des Ors I cannot tell you how much I've talked about this fragrance on my channel oh my goodness this is almost spammy at this point but if you haven't smelt this fragrance already it is a fantastic spicy vanilla scent very big dose of cardamom in the opening very realistic and natural smelling it's like as if you were crushing cardamom pods with a mortar and pestle and you were smelling it like that that is how realistic it is you also have some tahitian vanilla which is so beautiful it's not a vanilla that is super sticky and sweet it's more on the woody smoky side a lot of sensuality as well beautiful fragrance i like to describe it as being a cardamom vanilla sponge cake so it's delicious but also spicy and I can understand why people love it. It has a great sillage as well and it's a great autumn winter staple. Highly recommend this perfume. Totally agree with the votes on Instagram. Next up we have Burberry Her, the Eau de Parfum. So this fragrance is known as a notorious dupe to Baccarat Rouge by Maison Francis Curgent. And funny enough, it's the same perfumer that also created Burberry Her. So there you go. But essentially Burberry Her I find to be a more powdery and strawberry fruitier interpretation of Baccarat Rouge. Not that it's meant to be a dupe. I don't really know what the creative direction was for this fragrance. But I find that with Burberry Her, it is a little bit more likable and less polarizing than Baccarat Rouge 540. A lot of people either love Baccarat Rouge or they hate it. Some people can't smell it. But with Burberry Her, it's just easier to understand and, as I said, more likable. If this medicinal dentist office kind of vibe that you get from Baccarat Rouge puts you off, you won't get it with Burberry Her. I think it's a fantastic designer fragrance and yeah, I would Totally recommend it and agree with the fact that it is compliment getting. Number seven, we have an old favorite of mine. It is Belle d'Afrique from Byredo. If I had only one fragrance to recommend to you ladies to get from Byredo, I would definitely recommend Belle d'Afrique over any other perfume, over Mojave Ghost, over Gypsy Water, which are again very popular fragrances from Byredo, but Belle d'Afrique is very special in my opinion. So this fragrance is a vetiver dominant fragrance, but it's not vetiver that is too early earthy or soy-like, which can be found in a lot of like masculine fragrances and give that sort of impression. In Belle d'Afrique, it's very soft and made in a solar way. It's complemented with some florals. There's some other woods as well in the background and overall it's very light and airy. I tend to reach out for this scent more in the autumn and winter time just because I like woodier fragrances during that period of the year. But I have heard that a lot of people also wear it in the summertime. So if you want like a 
wearable, fresher vetiver for summer, then this one is a great one to go for. And yes, it is compliment getting. I have complimented several people who have worn this fragrance when I was hanging out with them adore this scent. Such a little gem from Byredo. This next one really surprised me. I wasn't expecting it on any list really. It is Thé Noir 29 by Le Labo. And when I say I'm not expecting it, it's not because it's a bad fragrance. It's just that it doesn't get all the love and attention that it deserves. This is another fragrance that say if you were just buying for the first time in Le Labo, if there's one perfume I'd recommend, it would be Thé Noir, not Santal 33. Thé Noir, in my opinion, is probably the best fragrance from Le Labo. It's a spicy black tea with some fig nuances. It is beautiful and don't worry if fig is off-putting to you. It's not super dominant in this perfume. It's mainly spicy with like bay leaves and this like really intense black tea notes. I'd like to wear this perfume in the winter time when it is very cold outside, there may be some snow. It's like, I don't know, minus 10 degrees or something. For some reason, I like to reach out for this scent. That being said, my husband also likes to wear it, but he wears it now, so, and we're almost in summer. So I think this perfume is quite versatile. It's more of a daytime scent. I wouldn't recommend it necessarily in the evening, but it is a versatile daytime perfume that you could potentially wear all year round. If you love tea perfumes and specifically spicy tea scents, but that still remain fresh and not too intense, I invite you to try Thé Noir 29. Okay, so now we're getting into the top five. Number five, we have Scherzo by Miller Harris. So happy this made this list. Such a gorgeous, gorgeous fragrance. Like, ladies, you need this perfume in your life, 100%. This is one of my most favorite perfumes ever. So it is a rose oud perfume, but it's not rose and oud composition that you would typically think of when you think of a rose oud fragrance. It's very different. The rose is very fresh. You have some like transparency going on. So like fresh musky rose blended with some like fruity nuances. And the oud is more in the background kind of to anchor the fragrance and add a lot of intrigue. It's not pungent, crazy, intensely woody. It's just there to add something that's quite enigmatic. Such a stunning fragrance, great for date night. You can wear it all year round. It projects massively as well and is super, super long lasting. So it's more on the beast mode end as well. Fantastic fragrance from Miller Harris. I will forever recommend this perfume. In fact, I'm gonna spray it. Oh, so good. And Miller Harris pump out this fragrance into the street from their boutiques. And it like literally draws people in. I mean, that's how they drew me in and I ended up buying this fragrance. Skirts Home by Miller Harris. Number four, we have Rouge Malakite by Armani Privé. Stunning tuberose scent. For all the white floral lovers, you need to get your nose on this perfume. So it is mainly dominant in tuberose, but you also have some jasmine and orange blossom and a really gorgeous base that's like ambery and warm made up of benzoin that has this like light vanillic touch. This fragrance is stunning and it is so much better in the dry down than it is in the opening. The opening I find to be a little bit harsh, more of like a green tuberose, which can be a bit off-putting, but wait one to two hours. The dry down as like the fragrance warms on the skin, it is perfect. Another great date night fragrance. Again, you can wear this one all year round and I'd recommend you spray this maybe one to two hours before going out to get that beautiful dry down, beautiful sillage going. Rouge Malakite by Armani Privé, number four. Number three is Atomic Rose by Initio Parfum Privé. This is a fizzy, thorny rose that I always like to say is Delina's sexier older sister. Personally, I prefer wearing Atomic Rose over Delina and it doesn't have that fruity, tangy green rhubarb note that can be a little bit off-putting to some. It's a little bit sharp in Delina. You don't have that in Atomic Rose. You have fresh rose with some spices. There's some pink pepper and also that beautiful like vanilla amber base. Very sexy. Another great date night fragrance. I don't know if this is a theme here in this list, but like a lot of these perfumes are appropriate for date night if you want to feel sexy and like confident. This is like confidence in a bottle as well. Like you want to feel really good. You're sexy in your outfit. You finish off your look with this fragrance. Like 
you'll feel great. Like, as, at least I do when I wear this fragrance. Another one that stays forever, 12 hours plus on clothes. It lasts days on end with a massive projection too. Okay, now for the top two. These two fragrances by far got the most votes. And this one is surprising because as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, it was featured in the worst fragrances ever list, which was also rated by Instagram, by the way. It is Maison Francis Jean Baccarat Rouge 540. So as I said, you know, when it comes to fragrances, it's very subjective and you kind of have to go with your preference, what makes you feel great, what you love to wear. That is what's most important ultimately. So Baccarat Rouge, I personally smell as being sweet, fluffy and airy kind of cotton candy situation going on, but it is so much more than that. I find this fragrance to be extremely complex. I think it is an iconic trailblazing type of perfume, such a beautiful fragrance from Maison Francis Jean. And yes, I would still recommend it today. I personally don't wear it anymore on its own because I feel like I've smelt it too much, but I do really enjoy layering it. it because it is a linear fragrance it's not going to move too much as it develops on the skin it's great for layering and also helping to boost your fragrance and with that you can layer it with the number one fragrance this was suggested by a subscriber so the number one fragrance that received by far the most votes is Delina by Parfum de Marly. It is feminine, it is girly, and it's really likable. And actually when I'm thinking about the list and these perfumes, and especially the top two, these two fragrances, this fragrance with Baccarat Rouge, are more entry level niche fragrances and they're very likable for the most part. <laughs> and so easy to understand and pretty safe buys when you're entering into niche for the first time. So Delina to me smells like a bouquet of peonies and roses and Turkish delight. Like rose infused Turkish delight is what this fragrance smells like to me. You have some vanilla as well in the background so it's a bit sweet and you have this tangy green rhubarb note that is very sharp in the opening but kind of persists along the dry down as well. This perfume is great as a signature fragrance. You can wear all year round, especially in spring and summer. It's nice to wear. It can also be a great bridal perfume. So you, it's a very versatile fragrance and you can get a lot of use out of it. And I totally understand why people would love this scent. So this is it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching and remember, spread the fragrant love.